All right, so I've had a couple of students that are starting to work on their ePortfolios now, and one of the things that a couple of them have noticed is that as they go to scan in the entire document at their work, it generates a file that is so big that essentially the scanner won't forward it on to their email account. Um, so they've got to scan it in little pieces, but that essentially means that you don't have a single PDF anymore. So I was going to put together a little video here now that shows you how to go about doing that. So as you can see from my email here, I've got a, um, a message from, and that's actually my scanner right there. And you can see I actually have eight of them, which means I've chunked up the ePortfolio that uh, I'm working with here into eight different pieces. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to open up all of these so I can download each of the files. And it'll take me a second here, obviously. And I want to download them in this order so that way it'll show up within my system as when they were created. Because oftentimes these have similar names. Um, in many cases you'll find that they will be called doc and then the second one will end up becoming doc with one in parentheses and the third one will be doc two in parentheses and so on. Uh, so by doing this um, and doing it in the order that we created them, essentially it'll show up in my system in the right sequence. So two left here. All right, so now they're all down here into my downloads folder. Uh, so you can see them all. They start off here with this 2015 and something. So there are the eight files right there. Now the way in which I'm going to go and combine them is I'm going to open up my Adobe Acrobat. You'll note that I have the Pro Edition here. Um, I do believe you can just do this with the regular Adobe Acrobat Edition. Uh, if not, we'll need to contact me and we can figure this out. Um, what you'll see when you get in here, depending upon if you've been opening up things recently, you may see things under the recent files, although that may also be blank on your end. Don't worry about that. It's actually this right-hand side here that we're interested in. Specifically, we're looking to combine files into a single PDF. Now, you'll note it just says combine files. It doesn't say combine PDFs. So in all honesty, I could have six different Word files here that I wanted to put into a single PDF, and it would still work. Um, so I'm just going to click on that and it opens up my combined files box here and I want to go up into the top left hand corner where it says add files and I'm going to add individual files and it'll just take me to my desktop once it stops thinking and I'm going to go into my downloads folder where I had all of those things and you'll see them all listed here so you'll notice that they're in the order in which I created them so the one here at the bottom is the first one I saved. So I'm just going to go through and click on all of those, add files, and you'll note that they come in in the exact time sequence that I saved them, so I don't need to reorder them here. If I did need to reorder them by chance, I would just click on it, and you'll see down here in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see that you can move it up or down in the sequence. So if I wanted to move this one up one, I'd click on there, or if I want to move it down one, I could click there. Similarly, if I brought in something that I shouldn't have, I could just highlight it and click on this document here with a little red X by it, and it would delete that particular file from the ones that I have there. So I'm just going to, now that I've got them all there and I'm happy with the order that they are, I'm going to click Combine Files, and it'll see, as you can see here on the right, it's moving them through. And then once it's done, it'll open up into um, Adobe for me. The default name that it always comes by, can't find my, oh, there's my cursor. The default name it always comes by is binder1.pdf. So what I'm going to want to go back and do, and I'm going to go save as, I'm just going to save that with a descriptive name, in this case, mbarberportfolio.pdf. Um, I always like to have my name in the file name, so that way when the instructor gets things, they don't get 10 copies of ePortfolio or 10 copies of assignment.pdf and then I just click save and it saves it. Now if it's a little bit big you can actually decrease the file size of it. Uh, there's a couple of ways in which you can do that. Um, oftentimes if you have the newer versions you can go file save as other and you'll see there's one there called reduced size PDF 
So if you click on that, it'll actually, you can retain the existing copy, and this is whether what it's compatible to. If you want to make it really small, pick one of the oldest versions and click on that. Um, you can retain existing as well, and what this essentially does is it takes all of the images and turns them into pixels as opposed to keeping them as an image. So it's kind of the difference between um, if you were to consider something that's like a photograph compared to something that was printed on an old dot matrix printer. Um, so right now, when you scan it in, anything that isn't text is scanned in like a photograph by actually taking away some of the, um, the resolution of it, and essentially saving it as if it was all these little dots as opposed to a larger photograph, it decreases the file size. So I just click OK there, and it'll ask me if I want to, you know, what I want to call it. I'm going to keep it the same name, and it'll ask me if I want to replace the one I've got. Sure. And now it'll actually go through, and you'll notice the first thing it does is it starts processing the images because that's where most of the size is located. Um, so it'll take a second to do that, and when it's done, um, essentially you've got the smallest version of your file that you would be able to create, and um, you've got your portfolio all into a single document.